Hey there, welcome to another knowledge exchange session with SEOreseller.com or what we call Kex Plus. Kex Plus is geared towards small and medium sized businesses, helping them drive through the chaos that can happen online. Uh, we look to answer the question of why uh, a digital presence is needed, uh, what's the best approach for your business, and then how to implement that, that strategy effectively. Uh, before we move forward, my name is Jason Whitfield, and I'm joined here by CJ and DC. Uh, I'd love to give both of you a big Texas good morning, guys. And down here, we have a simple saying, howdy. So, howdy, guys. How are y'all doing? That uh, We're doing great, Jason, DC. Um, I don't know. I mean, how's the weather where you guys are at? I mean, Jason, mainly. It's hot here. Hot and dry. Same here. Uh, it's also hot and dry. Howdy, Jason. Like to use that greeting. And I'm also, I'm so excited for today's Keck session because this is a wonderful opportunity for us to share how digital presence can up the game for any business. Before we jump into this Keck session, uh, let me just give a quick review of what we talked about in the last webinar. Last time, we shared the concept of bricks to clicks. So let's say you're a dentist from Minnesota. Uh, so we have from Texas and Minnesota this time. And you have a clinic. You have a brick and mortar pl uh, place where you can accommodate your, pa uh, your patients. Your business has grown strictly through referrals and word of mouth, which is most of you guys, uh, uh, business owners, have, have grown your business so far. And you get customers when people refer you or maybe see your posters and, and ads. So far, you probably had very little to no digital presence. But now you want to take your business to the next level. And this is where digital marketing comes in. It will bring in clicks. When your potential customer, someone who has a toothache or needs crowns or fillings, use their phone to look for a dentist nearby, your website, Google Maps, or Facebook page will be shown to them. These potential customers will click on your business and that is what we shared last time in our Kex Plus webinar series. So I'm so excited of what we will be able to bring to the table for our small uh, businesses and uh, small to medium businesses today. Jason? Yep, yeah, thanks DC. That was a, definitely a profound uh, discussion. And again, if you guys missed the last webinar or the, uh, the webinar before that, uh, don't worry. We've got you covered. Follow our Facebook, LinkedIn pages, uh, YouTube channel, uh, so you can rewatch our webinar anytime um, uh, there. So today we are back and we're going to empower small to medium sized businesses nationwide through, again, Kex Plus webinar series, Bricks to Clicks, your business online presence. So uh, this webinar series will help empower local business owners in the brick and mortar stores to help build their digital presence, earn clicks, and grow businesses online. Uh, uh, both profitably and effectively. And that's why we're here. We can help uh, stake your claim online, grow your visibility, and increase your overall customer interactions and walk-ins if you're a brick and mortar. So let me introduce you again to CJ. CJ, take it away. Hey guys, so it's CJ again here. Uh, I'm sure, you know, I, I hope you're not getting tired of my face yet. But this, this is like what, the third, fourth time? I'm not sure anymore, yeah, but yeah. Got, is that where it's <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as a digital marketing agency, we have helped hundreds, again, if not thousands of fellow digital marketing agencies. And we run uh, from SEO to paid media uh, to web dev. And again, our expertise is really, you know, helping all of the digital marketing firms uh, doing the grunt work for them. Uh, and we've been refining our work for, for the past 10 years. And we, we honestly think we've arrived at the right formula. And now we want to share it with the local businesses like you, or at least the owners like you. So yeah, let's get uh, let's get it started, ZC. Let's go. Right. Uh, before we share the eight reasons why small businesses need digital marketing, just a few reminders for the participants in this webinar. Please be on mute if it's not our turn to speak. The webinar is recorded, so after we're done, uh, just like what Jason said earlier, we'll send out a link to the recording. You may turn on your camera if you want, and the most important rule is that feel free to ask questions by clicking the raise hand function found at the bottom of the screen. Okay, with that, all out of the way, we'll jump into the knowledge sharing session. I'll give you to CJ. Go ahead, CJ. All 
All right, thank you, DC. And as what you're seeing on the screen, we are we want to talk about the eight reasons why small businesses need digital marketing. And I want I want to I want to talk about again why that's very important for uh, well not just for us but also of course for you uh, and for your local businesses. Uh, I mean, success is really what we're looking for, right? I mean, we want our small businesses to, uh, businesses to succeed and. One way for us to be able to to really measure that is, of course, is not just with revenue, but also with the, gro uh, the growing customer base, right? And I, I do want to insert this in the in the conversation as well, that you know, like I mean, there's a recession, uh, either it's already here or, or or it's coming. A lot of this will affect on how uh, our consumers or or you know prospects will will want to spend moving forward for whatever service uh, or product. It will be right, but uh, there, there's, there's a misconception that comes in with that thought. We're in okay. If if people will stop purchasing, should I stop marketing? And again, I, I want to be able to 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 get out of that misconception. We're in no, actually, this is actually the right time for you guys to start marketing, and not just traditionally, but of course also digitally because. Everybody else is thinking the same thing, you know. Okay, we should stop marketing because nobody's gonna buy anyway. But that's the point. This is actually the time where you should start pushing for that, right? So again, I mentioned you can't just rely on traditional marketing methods. Uh, you need to be visible online as well. And you know, at first, some of you guys may think that digital marketing can seem really overwhelming, uh, but don't worry. We we understand how you feel, and you know. After all, it's it, it won't be easy, you know, trying to keep up with uh, with the ever changing landscape of the internet, and that's fine. That's why we're here. So we want to help you really make sense of it all. So let's talk about the key benefits, right? So we have about eight reasons to talk about today, and let's go to our first one, which would be about your budget, because. If, if, if like what you're seeing on screen, a misconception here is that digital marketing is expensive, right? For some, especially if you haven't tried it yet, it might look like it's like it's it's expensive. But think about it, or at least if you've done traditional marketing, you'll find that traditional marketing is is extremely more expensive, right? But what's the fact in that, right? Digital marketing costs less than traditional marketing, and Google estimates that for every one dollar spent on paid ads. You actually make eight dollars in profit. Again, this is based on data that Google has. So, again, why do we want to drive this uh, uh, for for your business? Because foot traffic is great when you own the brick and mortar store, right? With with digital marketing, you can expand your re reach not just with foot traffic. So let thus the concept bricks to clicks, right? Digital marketing is your voice in the market of choice, which again, the market of choice right now is digital. Your website, for example can help you reach audiences from different parts of the country, right? So, I mean, even if they're not able to go to your uh, store physically, they'll be able to either talk to you online and, and, and do the negotiations online to be able to purchase online. Uh, this will allow you to also add, of course, informative content on your website, which can help you gain authority in your industry. And the, the goal here uh, is, is for your brand to become the expert in that field, right? And for whatever service or product you're selling. And they'll most likely be be uh, be able to visit your site for more information. That's again nurturing the the prospects or at least the users that, or the prospects. I mean, I mean, would be clients that are going that are going to be finding your service. And uh, finally, they will be able to start sharing your content on social media. You know, and our goal here is to be able to turn them into into client ambassadors or 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 think about it like missionaries who are able to talk about your brand out uh, your brand outside right so let's go to point number two and oh yeah there we go thank you dc and for point number two there are many digital marketing options to choose from so much like uh uh what i was talking about a while ago traditional is still is more expensive than digital and and to top that off, digital will actually uh, give you more options to choose from. So you're not just going to be bound to one strategy when you do digital marketing, right? Again, we talked about social media. There's paid ads. There's SEO. There's there's link building among others, and and each of these strategies uh, is tailored to target uh, whatever conversion or, or type of conversion you're looking for, right? Because when they say conversion, it can either be a purchase on your website. And can be a, it can be a sign up, 
and can it can be a phone call but ultimately of course at the end of at the end of that we want a purchase to happen right so uh, what's an example a paid ads uh, uh like, yeah a paid ad will target an audience or, or a group of audience who are ready to take action while content marketing which is awareness about your brand right so Depends on wh which phase your brand is. If you're new to digital marketing, of course, we want to we gotta raise awareness first. Once people or users already know what your brand is, and then we can start to go to targeted ads. And we'll we'll delve more deeply in, into how each strategy works as we go along. Again, in in the in the X Plus series, which we'll have you know special uh, uh, sessions on specifically each strategy. So we'll we'll have that followed down the line. But yeah. There's, there's a lot of options to choose from with digital marketing. Let's go go to point number three, uh, DC. All right. Point number three, you can expand your reach, right? So uh, owning a, a brick and mortar store means you're tied to foot traffic, right? I mean, again, that's that's the that's the common thing in, 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 in every local business owner. I have a physical store. A lot of my, my customers will come from uh, foot traffic. Uh, I, I, and I, well, I'll say a couple of years ago, yes, that's true, but nowadays, not anymore, right? That's that's not entirely. The, I mean, a lot of your customers will not just come from foot traffic. Again, with digital marketing, you can easily go from bricks to clicks. Something as simple as setting up your own business website can already increase the number of people who are aware of your brand, right? And again, that's not just a website. It's, it's also a property in, in a social media uh, a page or a, a business listing, right? You can easily reach audiences from different parts of the country, even the world, right? Depends, again, on what your target market is. And we want to be able to take this to a step further. You can actually start adding informa uh, like inform information or in more informative content on your website to get authority in your industry, like what, what I talked about uh, a while ago, for you to, to sound like or to be the expert in that field. And again, further expand your reach by promoting content through social media. You will be able to build a community of users there, and then you can start interacting. The more connections you can make with your customer, of course, the better of your chances of gaining their trust and loyalty that will ultimately lead to retention, right? So let's go to the, the next uh, benefit, DC, thank you. You can target multiple audiences at once. So a while ago, I talked about paid ads being able to target a specific type of audience, and you can actually target more than one. You, know, you can actually target multiple audiences at the same time. So uh, think about it like like an ad inside a local newspaper, right? It would, it would only be able to target well, technically, anybody who's who subscribed to that newspaper or or anybody who's, who's you know gonna be uh, 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 fortunate enough, enough to pick up a newspaper. So think so they think about that for a while, and even then, you can only hope that you know the the investment in in that ad pays off. As as there's really not an easy way or no really no easy way to really measure uh, if somebody bought something from you through a newspaper, more so a billboard, right? But with, but with digital marketing uh, and its many options, you can actually formulate a strategy that you can track, right? So again, it can reach different types of audiences from your website to social media ads to paid media ads. And you can be as specific uh, in terms of, of, of how you want to target these customer segments. You can even target customers in a specific street at a specific time, at a, in, uh, with a specific gender, so on and so forth, right? Like, like again, again, an example is if you're selling baby products, uh, you can be you you can you can own you you can allow those ads to to show up at a certain time of day where you think uh, yeah, these people who are taking care of 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 their babies at home would most likely be online, right? So, well, I mean, market research will will help you go go. I mean, find out what that is. But you, you get you get what I mean, right? You will be able to to know who to show the ads, where to show it, and actually when to show it, and that's completely controllable. With digital marketing and you can track it as well right and if, if you want to learn if you want to learn more uh feel free to reach out to us which you know we'll, we'll give you details a bit later and we can you know uh strategize some, some avenues we can we can talk about but yeah the the first thing here is we we need, we need to be able to know where your business is at right and, and at least what traffic or sorry what which channels you're already using aside from traditional thank you dc we're, we're, we're now on 
let us go to, to the fifth one, where digital marketing offers visibility on the results of your campaigns, right? So have you heard about Google Analytics? You know, have you, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you have, maybe not. But in a nutshell, it, it's, a, it's an analytical tool that Google provides to uh, uh, to anybody who's actually well, created a website and, and would want to uh, have their website published in Google, the, the, the search engine. And it basically tracks your website's performance, right? And not just performance, but also uh, how users interact with your website. So we won't overwhelm you right now with all the details of how you know Google Analytics will work. But know that it's gonna, going to be, of course, beneficial because you can strategize depends on uh, basically the data we get, right? For, let's say for a span of 30 days, this is the traffic you got. This is how much movement you got in the website or in a specific page, and then we can strategize from there. And it can actually tell you how many users, for example, visited your website in a given time period. Uh, it can show you how they interacted with your content. You, know, you, can, you can actually even know where their mouse is, you know, as has been clicking, has been clicking to, or where it's been hovering for a while. Whether they bounced out or stayed on a page, and it can even show you how many page views a specific piece of content has. Uh, but 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 uh, also for us, it's, it's also important that you know where your customers are coming from, right? So so that you'll know which pages are not performing, which pages are not really uh, 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 producing good content for your users to actually uh, consume. And all this data can be available to you. Uh, so the, so again, you don't have to guess how many people are buying from you. It's it's all right there. And comparing this again to to traditional. It's a bit trickier, right? Not, not not compared to how digital does it. All right. We see if we can go on to our next point. Right. And you can use again the data we talked about that, that that's gonna come from GA or Google Analytics to customize your campaigns or your marketing campaign. So, like we mentioned, the data is there, it's available to you to fully understand your audience behavior online. And from there, you can actually craft the best strategy to convert them to loyal customers. So Again, if you're seeing that uh, they're hovering their, their, their cursors on a specific part of that page, maybe that's where you should put your call to action button, right? Colors will 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 will, will play a part in that. You know, like like how the how green or or, or or blue. I mean, based on studies I've read before, can actually push for 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 more clicks, right? Um, and again, you you can you can find all this information online. Um, a lot of of, of bigger of actually bigger companies have done this research in terms of how this this can affect their call to actions and conversion rates but the other benefit is also that you might also discover that you have an audience that you've ne you never knew about right i mean for example the facebook uh, uh, uh they actually offer lookalike audience targeting right so i mean it sounds funny lookalike audience targeting option but what, what this will do is they will run ads to audiences that share the same features as your target audience Right. So meaning because when you when you run these campaigns, you will provide a, a list of of, uh, uh, of options or provisions that your target audience has. So Facebook can actually uh, uh, give you options. Hey, you know what? With, with these options you provided, this is also another set of audiences you can target. So that's also, I mean, a big thing we're in. You don't have to do it on your own, right? The, the, the platform will actually help you. Right. So in this case, that's that's Facebook. So. A lot of the data you're going to get from from analytics will help you push further on how to make your uh, future marketing campaigns better. That's again, you know, the time and money spent. Of course, we'll not just go into a black hole, which is great. Thank you, DC. Moving to our next point: expand your service offering and locations with successful marketing campaigns. Right. So the more successful your marketing campaigns are, right? Of course, the audience will grow. The the, the following will grow. Then what what will this tell you, right? I mean, because it's it's precise that you know a specific marketing campaign worked, right? Uh, again, I'm not just I'm not just dissing on, on traditional here. I'm just saying that how tricky it can be, right? Like if you're running TV ads, if you're running uh, 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 billboards, newspapers, posters, and whatnot, whenever you get purchases, you can't really tally on which channel they came from. Not like if it's digital, right? You can actually really precisely know where they came from where did they come from the the, the blog or, or the click from the website so on and so forth it will be that easy that means that for your business you, you can replicate the marketing efforts based on which channel was was the most successful 
right? You see that the blog was really great. It, it garnered a lot of users. Maybe you should create more blogs with the same type of quality, right? So the more confident you feel about the, the effectiveness, right, the more you can build the cadence around it and you can build a cycle that can actually help you grow your business at, at every opportunity, right? So let's go to the next one, which should be our, our last one for, for our benefits. There are resources and tools everywhere, right? So again, one of the, the, the best things about digital marketing is that, you know, you can technically look for anything online, right? There's going to be resources and tools available anywhere, right? Uh, if, if you want to learn more, uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of resources online you can read through. There's some videos you can watch, like like exactly what we're doing now, right? If anybody finds this, this video in the future, right, it'll, this, this will provide a lot of insight and in, in, in information. And the again, the, the goal here also from, from, from our end, of course, here at Kex Plus, or at least this webinar series, and is to be able to provide you guys with bite-sized information that, of course, is uniquely valuable and that is extremely value-adding, right? So uh, we understand how overwhelming it can be sometimes, you know, trying to navigate, of course, the digital landscape, especially when you're new. And sometimes there will be technical, you know, some technical jargon and strategies and concepts that will, of course, will sound extremely unfamiliar, right? But uh, we will help you understand them, right? And as the series goes on, we'll dive further into these concepts and look at how they can be, of course, beneficial to you. And it won't stop there. So we, we won't just provide you the content uh, and information. You can actually go to us to ask some questions and, you know, uh, yeah, we can, then we can discuss, discuss further. Now, we, we didn't really talk about this at the beginning, but we, we actually uh, uh, do want to show you a sample uh, we we took a we took a look at uh, like big brands uh, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, uh, like retailing, right? Um, we have actually Walmart and, and, and Target like on, on, your, on our screens right now. So two of the biggest retailers in the world. But also, of course, big with digital marketing. You know, so they're actually digital marketing giants. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to, to pit them against, uh, against each other in terms of, of how successful the digital marketing campaigns have been. And we'll show you guys who, who comes out on top, right? So, but again, don't don't focus on just the, 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 the brands here. What we're really trying to point out here is if, if you if you start uh, doing digital marketing uh, uh, and you, 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 you look at all the information, you need to take a look at your competitor analysis and all that. Uh, um, again, results from analytics, and this is how the digital marketing results can look like, right? So let's go first, uh, DC, on the first mm -hmm. segment of, of the stats we want to talk right. about. But, yeah. But before Google. doing that, uh, CJ, since this is a battle of the brands, I, I want to bet on Walmart. How about you, Jason? Who are you <laughs> betting to be I, the better digital marketer? Who do you yeah, got? I want to go with you. I want to go with you, DC. I want to bet on Walmart, too. Walmart so, leaves Target with CJ. Yeah, I know. I was We're going to put bets on this, okay? We're going to put bets. That means I don't have a choice. Huh? So, so let's go Target. All right, okay. That Target. Let's do it. Let's All do right. It. How about our participants? Anybody who's betting on Walmart yeah. or, or yeah. Target? Uh, maybe um, it's where you usually shop, right? So <laughs> let's see. Let's see who's going to win it. Let's see, actually. All right. Let's talk about the website traffic. As you guys can see on your screen. Wow. So, so there we go. It's actually Walmart who's getting a lot more unique visitors in a month, right? We have about 59 million versus 40 million uh, unique visitors uh, in a month. So let me just explain real quick, real quickly. Of course, unique visitors are new visitors that come in in a month, right? And the way this is uh, uh, tracked is, you know, either through IP from their internet providers or like, uh, yeah, uh, how how often does a new person visit the website in this case yeah walmart is actually getting more of, of, of that or like a bigger piece of that pie in this case and why, why is this important because again if you want to succeed in inbound marketing you know attracting traffic is an important first step right once you've got visitors coming to your site you need to be able to engage with them turn them into leads and then this is where inbound marketing 
uh, it will really do its magic in driving quality traffic, of course, and then converting them into results. Because, I mean, traffic is all well and good, but if these people are not ready to buy anyway, I mean, I mean, it's okay for them to look around, but ultimately, you want to be able to convert them into actual purchases. But the more visitors you get, right, the higher the percentage there is of turning them into leads. So in this case, uh, Walmart has 19 million more of a chance, right, in, into getting these uh, these leads into purchases. So that's great. That's good to know, DC. Let's go to the next one, which should be about. Mm -hmm. I bet you Walmart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> search engine optimization. And again, in general, uh, well, both websites have generated tons of traffic and inbound links. Uh, but yeah, however, Walmart came in first with about 48,000 uh, at the moment. And these links coming from high authoritative pages like New York Times and BBC. So wow, I mean that's that's that sounds really great. Another unique thing thing that that uh, that Walmart did for their SEO efforts was to give detailed descriptions on their sub pages, right? So meaning if they're not really even if they're not their main pages, they they're just sub pages. They they all they, they still provided a complete descriptive informational detailed descriptions of, uh, of them. Unlike Target that went with just their tagline, which is, you know, expect more pay less on every page, which is still good for branding. But again, as a as a user, when you go through these sub pages, you'd want to to be able to know uh, at least yeah what, what these pages would offer, even while you're inside just the search results. And why is this noteworthy? Because again, meta descriptions like what we talked about previously in our in our previous sessions, they're very important, an important part of SEO. Because meta descriptions, so again, these are the descriptions that that uh, appear in the search results uh, under the, the actual URLs of pages. And when, when you're writing meta descriptions, make sure to include relevant keywords uh, in them and, and what, what what product or services. Uh, so there we're thinking these for the example. So yeah, those are the, the meta descriptions, the descriptions right under the the links that, that are clickable. So these meta descriptions, they, they really act, I think about it like, uh, if it's a if the links of the actual target links are movies, these meta descriptions are the trailers for them, right? They need to be able to, to really talk about what's what what the user will find even before they click, right? So it will really help with uh, the click through rate, right? Which is which is the ranking factor in Google, right? So the more people click on your link, uh, the the more authoritative your link becomes, right? So. Yeah, in this case, it's still Walmart. Let's go to our next one. Let's see if Target is hitting its target. Let's see. Okay, well, for mobile optimization, it's a tie. Okay, great. There we go. I mean, uh, this is also Target's <laughs> trying to get uh, its traction. So both sites are well optimized for mobile devices, which is great because, again, a lot uh, of the percentage of users uh nowadays or at least online customers or, or prospects are really gearing towards more to mobile i think uh with the last research i did we now have about 80 percent of users now on mobile right so uh there's no question mobile optimization is a must have for any website these days because if you're not mobile friendly google will favor the one or at least a competitor that is mobile friendly so if you haven't optimized your site for mobile devices yet now is the time to do it. Don't wait any longer, or you risk being left behind. You know, and again, it's an ever-growing world of mobile internet usage, right? So it's a tie for this one. Let's go on to the next one, DC. Let's see how that would look like. I think this should be for social media. Oh, there we go. So it's a tie. So why is it a tie? Because if if you see the screen, Walmart has 126 uh, Twitter followers. But, but Target has more Twitter followers at 20, 25,000. Uh, but for Facebook likes, though, Walmart has a whopping 9 million and Target a 7.2. I wish I had the same following <laughs> if I if I start my own page. But yeah, I mean, look at this case. It's a tie because uh, Twitter, Target's winning, Facebook, uh, yeah, Walmart, Walmart's winning. And again, both of, both of these uh, social media sites provide a lot of brand awareness uh, uh, and both um, Walmart and Target and actually do more of the community building here as well, customer service even, right? Um, both sites though, I think, uh, still need better blogging strategies. 
um, because uh, I think they could add more blogs in, into uh, inside of Facebook and and Twitter, or, at least, or at least links in, into these blogs. Um, but yeah, we all know content is king, right? So why? So that's why this is important. We we want to be able to to drive the traffic to the websites using content. Uh, we actually did uh, a bit of research to uh, with 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 HubSpot data, and HubSpot said that companies that that blog. Or, or, or yeah, produce a lot of blogs, get 55% more website traffic than those who don't, right? So that's a pretty significant increase. So it's definitely worth considering that if you're looking for ways to give uh, your website a boost, you know, a, a well-maintained blog can help can help you make sure that potential customers can see the best of your business. So it's either providing you know hygiene content every week or every other week, but at least every month you have like sort of like hero content that will catch uh, a prospect confidence right so yeah i mean if, if you haven't been planning your blog yeah your or your 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 blog schedules you should you, know, you should start writing right okay so let's go to the next one and let's see again where target or walmart will be okay so we are at average session duration so just to explain a bit what this is this is so average session duration is yeah how long technically they stay on the website like at any given visit so in this case Walmart is actually getting more uh, or like a longer session duration, which is at three minutes versus target, which is averaging from one to three minutes. So uh, reports show that customers look at about two to six pages when they visit either site. Uh, but again, the, 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 the thing here is most likely because Walmart has more content in terms of descriptions, and that's why this is affected. And why, why is this noteworthy? You know, analytics can tell you which pages on your website are the most influential in terms of driving purchase behavior. So, of course, Walmart and Target will be looking at their, their Google Analytics for this. And uh, again, once you know which pages are actually giving the, the most impact, you can create content that can further boost that, uh, I mean, that, that page's power. You can actually have some pages, uh, a link to that page. You know, if, if it's a blog that talks about really uh, uh, services and products for, for for Walmart or Target. So yeah, I mean you can actually use that. Again, the better the data that you find out from Google Analytics, this ensures that you're making the most out of your website, right? To to drive not just sales, but of course even even retention for loyal customers. So I think based on the information or the data we looked at, DC, I think I will be. Yeah. Owing you. We have a runaway winner. <laughs> you owe me a dollar, huh? <laughs> or something. So let's see the winner. <laughs> yeah. Huh, so, yeah. No contest, I think. I mean, there was a bit of contest, you know, <laughs> with some, some of the parts there, there where they, they were tying. But yeah, ultimately, Walmart is making great strides in optimizing their site, you know, mainly for search engines uh, and, and, and for its online shopping base. Um, I, I, I wanna I wanna say here here though that you know Target you know may have been uh uh you know the the loser at least in 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 this uh, uh section session at least in terms of of how digital marketing looks like for both but I'd like to say that you know they are holding their own they have more areas that need to be improved of course either way you know we, we can easily take a page from their playbook uh, at least from Walmart's playbook I mean to take digital marketing to the, the digital market to the next level but. Yeah, I mean, overall, uh, again, uh, the the whole point of this uh, for us of us showing this is so don't just uh, uh, settle for just looking at the brands Walmart and Target, but how digital marketing is actually helping them, right? Driving traffic and 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 revenue to their website, right? Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, you want to know more about these uh, about these information? We're here to we're here to help, right? Uh, we can start with a free website audit. Um, we can identify areas, right, where uh, your website might need more of an improvement. And uh, I mean, we, we won't know until we take a look at your website, right? Um, you might have worked with a digital marketing, uh, uh, you know, company before. They might have done some work uh, on your website before. But if, if I'm pretty much sure if that's, you know, couple of years ago pre-pandemic or at least if it's not as recent as you know with the recession coming and whatnot i'm sure there's going to be a lot more opportunities for us to to be able to to check on how to improve the conversion rate and help you achieve your goals right so yeah i mean give us a call and uh, we can help you with that
but yeah, I'll, I'll throw it back to you, Jason DC, yeah. to, to wrap the conversation. Thank you, guys. Awesome. awesome. Thanks. Very, very wonderful uh, presentation there, CJ. So one of the things that, uh, that you mentioned was that traditional marketing can be a lot more expensive than digital marketing. And, and it's very true in a lot of senses, uh, especially when it comes to things like direct mail and, and radio billboards local publications, local television, they, those things can end up running in the thousands of dollars. And not only that, but many of those traditional methods may work for brand awareness, but not necessarily for driving, you know, quality, solid leads and sales. And I know firsthand how difficult it can be, be to, to track the effectiveness of some of those more traditional marketing services and, and, and methods. It's hard to quantify the effectiveness of, of radio and television and, and some other forms as well. And, and really the data uh, from my experience is based off of assumptions being made. And I absolutely love the, the data collection and, anal and analysis that you can do with digital marketing strategies to really ultimately position yourself in the right place online in front of the right audience at the right time. So. Uh, you, you've mentioned it before um, in relation to to making promises, and, and and we don't like to underpromise. We we promise that we're going to do what we say we'll do, and then over deliver. And I feel like that fits our company culture very well. So once again, that was a, a very informative and and just great examples of of exchanging knowledge. Uh, it's a good confirmation that if you're not online or you're you're early in you know in the early stages of being online um, and you're not focusing on marketing growth and expansion, you very well could be left behind, especially now that we're moving into a, a you know a economic retraction. But you know again here, as CJ had mentioned at, at seoreseller.com, we focus on being your partner, your your marketing arm. Um, just an extension of your marketing arm. If you already have marketing staff, we're available to, to, to do the work for you, but we're also here to, to help coach you through your digital marketing experience because there's a lot of chaos online and it's hard to know uh, uh, from a business perspective. If, if you have very little experience, it's hard to know what you need to be doing, when you need to be doing it and why you need to be doing it. So, so DC, any, any questions that we have before we wrap up? uh no questions coming from uh, our audience but i do have a curious question that i will uh throw in let's say uh i work with you guys uh and i uh you did my my first website audit and probably we optimize my website so what will be the initial metrics that i can measure uh or what will be the initial measurement of my success what will that be what do you guys think mm, i think that's great and CJ, feel free to obviously hop in, but yeah. I think I think the first thing for for us is making sure that our goals are aligned. So, what is your goal? Uh, with the assumption that you're you're coming in as a a local business, it's really about what is it that you're trying to trying to drive. Are you trying to drive more sales? Are you trying to drive more leads? Because it really is different. Most you know most businesses want want to grow online to drive revenue, but that's not always the case. Some some businesses may want better right. rankings to out outcompete their competitors. So for me, for me, the way that I like to look at it is, is making sure that, that our goals, uh, our campaign goals align with your business goals. And then once that is, is determined, we're able to, to look at the metrics that are based off of that information. CJ, do you have any other input? No, no, I, 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 I agree like extremely because, uh, yeah, it, almost always is okay i want to be online because i want to grow right which is okay that's fairly simple enough what does that look like <laughs> <laughs> exactly because yeah because normally they'll 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 they'll, they'll come in and yeah i want to go but how, how does that look like and i want to go back to to the basics right or to the fundamentals of digital marketing number one so yeah we'll again we'll set the goals of course right but do you already have a website yeah. Right. If you don't have a website, do you have the? Uh, are you signed up on the, at least the 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 listing properties? Right. Google right. My Business. Right. Google Business Profile and the likes. Or at least do you have a social media page? Right. So, a lot of 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 these fundamentals need to be existing first if we want to be able to drive traffic online. And again, uh, not just traffic, but growth online. And again, ultimately, 
to hit that goal, whatever that may be. Like like I mentioned a while ago, is that PDF downloads? Is that a sign up to the website to the newsletter, right? Or again, is it just ultimately purchases, which again is, is the most common goal. But in order for us to do that, then yeah, we have to build a roadmap to that success, right? So yeah. Yep. Right. Uh, thank you for answering that, guys. I'm pretty sure that is a question uh, that our uh, small to medium business owners uh, are also asking uh, themselves uh, right now. Thank you for giving clarity on that. And I suppose I close it with this uh, with this particular statement. The beauty about uh, uh, doing digital marketing is that you can measure almost everything in there. It tells you how much each yep. dollar or each cent uh, is giving you back in terms of the benefits of digital marketing. And that's something that uh, no other forms of marketing on ad or advertising can can easily can e uh, easily equalize or, or compete with, right? So, yep. And you've seen Walmart and you've seen Target. And even though they are really huge, they have huge numbers. And that is because they've already invested on their digital marketing presence. That's why their numbers are really up high there, skyrocketing. And who knows in the future, uh, that might be your own numbers too, right? Yep. yep. Okay. And yep. we'll be putting you up here on a webinar too, pitting you against right. another <laughs> Pitting you against Walmart, probably. <laughs> Don't worry, the, I'll bet on you guys. That's the goal, right? <laughs> so, so before we close, uh, we're here to help, like this uh, slide says. I do want to give you all the phone number and the web address. That, so our website is seoreseller.com. And our phone number, give us a call, uh, is 800-250-6106. If you have any questions or or need some advice or, or want to get started with your digital marketing strategy, let's get started. Awesome. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.